Act One of Detective Story, starring Kirk Douglas as Jim McLeod and Eleanor Parker as Mary McLeod. On a New York side street is the 21st Precinct Police Station. And up a shabby flight of stairs is the detective squad room with its desks, its files, and its busy telephones. So far, it's been a normal, routine day. 21st Precinct, Detective McLeod talking. Oh, yeah, Mr. Pritchett, I just brought this boy, Kendra did come over and identify. I'm Detective Brody. What can I do for you, mister? My name is Sims, Endicott Sims. I'm an attorney. Your office has a warrant for Mr. Kurt Schneider? Oh, that's my partner, Squeal. Hey, Jim? Kurt Schneider. What about Schneider, Counselor? Where is he? He's ready to surrender himself. Oh, fine. Bring him in. First, I have some photographs of Mr. Schneider. They were just taken. You'll notice he has no scars or lacerations. This is the way I'm bringing my client in. This is the way I want him back. I've heard a good deal about you, McLeod. A law unto yourself, so I'm warning you. I had the pleasure of arresting your client a year ago. I understand. He's changed his lawyer since if not his business. Kurt Schneider is a successful truck farmer from New Jersey. With an illegal medical practice in New York as a side. Now, just Oh, a... you'll excuse me a moment, Mr. Sims. Uh, that young man at my desk, he's a prisoner. I won't be long. Jim, call your wife. Oh, when's she phone? Five o'clock. Hi, you shamus. What you oh, doing? Oh, you're supposed to be an intelligent reporter, huh? Why, wow, what's the matter? That story you printed, that Langdon yarn. Didn't I spell your name right? That's all you got right. You're degenerating into a real sob sister, Yussel. <laughs> God, McLeod. A fox with rabies bit him on the ankle when he was two years old, and neither of them recovered. Okay, McLeod, what about this kid? This story worth a picture? Later, Joe, later. Hey, are the kindred? Where are you going? Nowhere. That's right. Just stay where you are, see? Don't try running for it. You just about reached the hall, and suddenly it put on wings. Bullets are supersonic. Don't worry. I won't. Either way. Hello? Oh, hello, darling. What'd the doctor say? Yeah? Good. Good. What tensions? What what he prescribed short of a new world? Phenobarbital and vitamin B1, the history of our times. <laughs> oh, Mary, you're wonderful. I love you. Yeah, I'll call you later, darling. Bye. Uh, sorry, counselor. Now, where were we? About my client. You're not going to abuse him physically or degrade his dignity as a human being, understand? Counselor, did you happen to see the girl your client operated on last year in the morgue on a marble slab? Wasn't much human left of her, Counselor, and very little dignity. My client was innocent. The court acquitted him. He was guilty. Send in your client. We'll be happy to receive him. As for you, McLeod, it's going to be a pleasure to examine you on the witness stand. Anything to give you a thrill, Counselor? We may have a thrill or two in store for you. Meaning? For over a year, you have been personally making my client's life a living hell. Why? Why? Because I'm annoyed by criminals that get away with murder. You're very easily upset. Oh, I'm very sensitive. To me, your client is just another criminal. That's your story, McLeod. Well, we've discovered otherwise. What's he driving at? Ah, a fishing expedition. Arthur, come here. Sit down. Now, what'd you do with the money? I spent it. You spent $480? Yes. Why'd you take the money? What's the difference? I took it, I admit it. I've been studying your little address book, Arthur. Who's Joy Carmichael? Let her alone. Maybe I better give her a ring, huh? She doesn't know anything about it. You wouldn't lie to me, would you, Buster? Why should I lie? I don't know. Why should you steal? Maybe it's because you're no good, huh? What's the kid got to say, Jim? Admission. him. Watch him, Lou. I got to make that phone call. Sonny, you look like a nice boy. How'd you get into this mess? You're going to give me a lecture? Don't get funny with me, son. I'll knock you right through the floor. How'd you get into this mess? I don't know. You got trapped? Well, Claude told me you went to college. What'd you study? History. What for? I wanted to be a teacher. Much of a career in that? I used to think so. Why didn't you finish college? They had a war, remember? I was in the Navy. You can't start from scratch at 25. Hi, Lieutenant. Hello, McLeod. Busy house, huh? Where's Dockers and Gallagher? Uptown, checking an apartment. Those two burglars, Janini and Abbott. No. That's Janini over there. Dockers and Gallagher took Abbott with them. Looks like we got some. Who's the punk in the corner with Brody? Arthur Kindred, embezzlement, 480 bucks, admission. Come on in the office, I want to talk to you. Sure. Good Schneider's lawyer grabbed me when I come in, chewed my head off. What's your personal angle on Schneider? Personal angle? His mouthpiece under the summer, or other. Oh, fishing expedition. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. Now, what do you got on Schneider? A girl in the hospital, critical. I'll take Schneider over for a positive identification. I got another witness, she's on her way over here, and I'll get a signed statement from Schneider. Oh. Persuasion. 
keep your big mitts off. Look, you ever meet Schneider, Lieutenant? He calls himself a doctor, a surgeon. This is an impersonal business, McLeod. You know, your moral indignation is beginning to give me a pain. You want to be the judge and jury, too? Well, I don't like lawyers coming in here with photos that marks my squad lousy. I don't like it, understand? Yes, sir. Can't you say yes, sir, without making it sound like an insult? Yes, sir. I don't like you, McLeod, any more than you like me, but you've got a value here, and I need you on my squad. You want my badge here? Take it. When I do, I'll ask for it. Now, get what you can out of Schneider, but no roughhouse. I don't believe in coddling criminals. Who tells you to? You do. The whole system tells you. Sometimes, McLeod, you talk like a maniac. All right, you got your orders. May I have the keys to the file, sir? <sighs> you got to have the last word, don't you? Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mr. McCall? Yes? I'm Susan Carmichael. Oh, yes, yes. Come in, please. Where's Arthur? What's happened to him? Did you reach his sister? What? Well, no. Joy, Joy's visiting friends in Connecticut. Arthur, is he all right? Yes, he's inside. Say, how well do you know him, Miss Carmichael? I've known him all my life. Kind of a wild boy, wasn't he? Arthur? But no, of course not. Why? Uh, did he give your sister any money? My sister earns $25 an hour. She's a very successful model. Will you please tell me what this is all about? What's his relationship to your sister? Is he in love with her? My sister is one of the most beautiful girls in New York. A lot of men are in love with her. He didn't give her any money then? No. Well, your sister's boyfriend's in trouble. What trouble? He's a thief. Who says so? He does. I don't believe you. Sit here. Come on out, Buster. What, Jiggs, what happened? Susan! Look, Mr. McLeod, do you have to drag children into this? Now, Jig. Susan, you shouldn't have come here. What happened? I took some money. Who from? A man I worked for. But why? Why? None of your business. Hey, Jim? Yeah. Got a minute? Yeah. He's here, Kurt Schneider, downstairs. He just came in. Susie, go home quick. Go home and don't say anything to anyone. Jiggs, what happened? Have you got a lawyer? No. I'll phone Joy and tell her. Do you want to get her involved? You want to ruin her career? Well, young lady, satisfied. How much did he take? $480. What's the difference? Will you please tell her to go home? All right, Miss Carmichael. Have your sister get in touch with me as soon as you hear from her. Susie, no, don't do it. Shut up. Okay, miss, you run along. Lou? Yeah? Keep an eye on Buster, will you? He's getting restless. Okay. Hey, hey, here he is. Schneider. Good. Well, Dr. Schneider, come in, come in. Sit down. How's the doctor business? I'm a farmer. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, what do you raise? Truck stuff, vegetables. How are things with you, McLeod? Well, this one business never has a depression. You know, when I retire, I'm going to buy myself a little farm like yours. Well, how'd you do it, Kurt? Who says I have? I do. $56,000 in four different banks. Well, I got it honestly. How? I don't have to tell you that. Oh, come on, Kurt. Make it easy for yourself. My name is Kurt Schneider. I live in Oakdale, New Jersey. That's all I have to answer. You operated on Miss Harris, didn't you? No, I did not. She identified your picture. Here. Sign it. What is it? An admission. You think I'm crazy? I'm getting impatient. You better talk, Kurt. I'm standing on my constitutional rights. Look, why don't you cop a plea while you can? Miss Harris is waiting to see you. We're going to visit her in the hospital. And what you don't know is there's a corroborating witness. She's downstairs ready to identify you right now. Say, you're getting pale, Kurt. <laughs> Am I? Maybe I know why you're out to get me. Why? You know why. Well, this is your last chance, Kurt. Do you want to talk? My name is Kurt Schneider. I live in Oakdale, New Jersey. Okay, okay. This is McLeod. Send some boys up, will you? I want them for a lineup. Civvies, hats, and coats. Oh, and tell my witness I'll be down to get her in about two minutes. Yes, thanks. <laughs> Very nice of you to come here, Miss Hatch. We appreciate it. Let's just get it over with, huh? I got an engagement. All right. Now, you'll see 10 or 12 men in a lineup. Yeah, and then I touch the one on the shoulder. Say, uh, that's a nice fur you're wearing, Miss Hatch. <laughs> like it, huh? Me? Uh-uh. Dyed squirrel. Looks real well, don't it? Uh, well, I guess they're ready for us in here. Now, look them over, Miss Hatch. Yeah, well, uh... Well, he isn't here. You haven't looked. Of course I did. Just look, will you? Not at me. Look at the men in the lineup. I don't recognize anyone. I never saw any of these guys in my life before. You identified a picture of one of these men. What are you trying to do? Make me give you a wrong identification? Look, take that, will you, Lou? Yeah. 
I got a good mind to prefer charges against you. That's what I get for trying to help you. Give you a badge and you think you can push the world around. You identified one of these men. Now point them out or I'll... You what? Hey, Jim, come here. Huh? I called just now. Well? The DA's office. The Harris girl just died. But... There goes the case. The DA says he can't get an indictment now. Just book the bum and forget it, he says. Yeah. Forget it. Let him go. Let him fill the morgues. Congratulations, Kurt. The girl died. All right, Miss Hatch, you earned your new fur piece. I hope you'll enjoy it. You can't talk to me that way. Now, take a couple of drop dead pills. Get lost. I'm going to see my lawyer about you. All right, boys, that's it. Thanks. Well, McCloud, you look real unhappy. Oh, shut up, you Look, I'm a reporter. I got a job to do. Your corroborating witness, was she reached, you think? What do you think? I don't know. The thieves and murderers could have written the penal code themselves. Your justice. It's a Rube Goldberg contraption. I was talking to Judge Mendez today. He just got on the bench last year, you know. 29 years a successful lawyer. Thought this would be a cinch. He's lost 40 pounds. He's as nervous as a cat. His wife thinks he's in love with someone else. He is. The law. He said to me today, he said, Joe, I got to sentence a man to death tomorrow. How can I do it? Who am I to judge? It takes a God to know, to really know. Buck. I'm quoting the judge. And he's a corrupt man himself. Evil has a stench of its own. A child can spot it. I know. I know, Yusuf. My own father was one of them. No good he was. Possessed. Every day and every night of my childhood, I saw and heard him abuse and torment my mother. I saw that sadistic, no-good father of mine drive my mother straight into a lunatic asylum. Yes, I learned it early and deep. Fourteen and alone in the world. I made war on it. Every time I look at one of these babies, I see my father's face. What do I do now, Mr. McLeod? Oh, forgive me, Mr. Schneider, for keeping you waiting. Yes, you're a lucky man. There's the stairs, Kurt. Why don't you run for it? Why should I run? Give me the little pleasure of putting a hole in the back of your head. As soon as you book me, I'm out on bail. When I go to trial, they couldn't convict me in a million years. You know that. Even if I were guilty, which I'm not. Get on your feet. Get up! Go in that office there. Now close the door and sit down. I'm going to give you a piece of advice. When the courts and the juries and the judges let you go free this time, get out of New York. Go anywhere, you murdering ape. But you butcher one more girl in this city in law or no law, I'll find you and I'll put a bullet in the back of your head and I'll drop your body in the East River. And then I'll go home and I'll sleep sweetly. Now, I'll give you some advice. I've got plenty on you, too, so watch your step. I happen to have friends, too, downtown with pull, have lots you? of pull. Oh, yeah. No, have you got any friends with push? Oh. Like that, for example. You let me alone. You cut that out. No, Don't let me go. Everybody else is going to let you go. Everybody except me. Uh, why didn't you obey your lawyer and keep your mouth shut? All right. Get up, Kurt. Come on, get up. I, I can't. Get up. I can't. There's something inside me when you're hit. You're all right. Oh. Oh. Get up. What's going on? Inside. No, he hurt me. Take it easy, son. You'll be all right. I feel terrible. Gallagher. Yeah. Get on the phone. Get an ambulance here. Yes, sir. Right. You resist you, McLeod? No. You lunatic, didn't I just get through warning you to lay off? He tried to kill me. Why should he do that, Schneider? Tommy, Giacopetti, same thing. She got him after me, too. Tommy, Giacopetti. What? Tommy, Giacopetti? Who's he? A little louder, Schneider. Just try and talk a little louder, lad. Just talking. He's unconscious. All right, who's Tommy Giacopetti? I have no idea. What's the pitch here, McLeod? He needled me. He got fresh. He begged for it, and I let him have it, that's all. Don't con me. That ain't all. What about Tommy Giacopetti? I never heard of him. This Giacopetti used to be a black market guy, Chief. Runs a creep joint in the village. If this man's hurt, the big brass will be down here throwing questions at me, and I'm going to have the answers. What's he got on you, McLeod? Nothing. Gallagher? Yes, sir. Find Giacopetti. Bring him in. My car's downstairs. Use it. Yes, sir. And you, McLeod, if you're concealing something, I'll have your head on a plate. Yes, sir. It's 40 minutes later. Lieutenant Monahan's on the phone. 
At his side are Detective McLeod and Schneider's attorney, Mr. Sim. Yeah, yeah, I see. Well, let me know right away, huh? Well, Mr. Sims, the hospital's making x-rays now. So far, you haven't got a leg to stand on. No, haven't I? How dare he take the law in his own hands? I'm going to press a felony assault, so help me. I may press a charge myself. Collusion, subornation of witnesses. What the devil are you talking about? I had a witness here. You bought her off with a fur piece. That's so absurd, I won't even... All right, cut that out, both of you. I warned you, Lieutenant. Personal motives are involved. You should have taken McLeod off this case. What motives? It's not to my client's interest to reveal them now. But I'll tell you once again, you can't use your badge for personal vengeance. Go ahead. Break me. You're worse than the criminals you represent. Yeah. Okay, be right out. You want it outside, McLeod? Something about those two burglars in any Abbott. Yes, sir. Bring your charges, Counselor. It'll give me a chance to get your client on the stand and really tear his clothes off. Yours, too. What kind of an officer is that? McLeod? Uh, he has his quirks. The understatement of the year. He's honest. No ten boxes. I wasn't saying he had. I thought you was, maybe. Oh, what were you saying? I can't discuss it with you. Well, I'd love to discuss it with someone. Who do you suggest? McLeod or his wife. What? His wife? Oh, never mind. Skip it. <laughs> Hey, got a minute, McLeod? No. Uh, what's with the two thieves, Abbott and Janini? Talk to Gally. Now, what about Kurt Schneider? No story. He left here 20 minutes ago in an ambulance. What happened? He tripped? Yeah, he tripped. No story. No. Look, Shamus, there are angles here I don't feel happy about. What angles? I don't know yet. Come on, give off the record. All right, look. Kurt Schneider's a butcher who's murdered two women and got away with it. It was time somebody put the fear of God in him. The law wouldn't, so I did. Print it, Yussel. Go ahead. You don't like cops? Here's your chance. <laughs> I don't like cops. <laughs> For a smart guy, Shamus, you can be an awful small. I, uh, I, I beg your pardon. Yes, sir. Oh, come in, Mr. Pritchett. We've been waiting for you. Did you get my money back from Arthur Kindred? I'm afraid not. But what did he do with it? Women, plush saloons. You'll be in court tomorrow morning? Of course. We can count on that. When I make up my mind, I'm like iron. Fine. Arthur, come out here. Arthur, why did you do this to me? You robbed me. You spent my money on fast women. That's not so, Mr. Pritchett. You know how hard I work, 10, 12 hours a day in the store. I want my money back. And you'll get it back, I promise you. What are you doing here, Miss Carmichael? I brought the money. Susan, no, $120. no. $120. I'll get the rest tomorrow, Mr. Pritchard. You can't take her money, you can't. I, I'm Arthur's friend. I'll, I'll sign a note, anything you suggest. You get in touch with your sister? What? Yes. Susie! I, I talked to Joy, Arthur. She doesn't even care, she... She said she can't afford to get involved in your trouble. Look, miss, he's no good. Believe me, I know. So take your money and run. McLeod? Yes, Lieutenant? Get me the old files on the Cotsworth squeal. Cotsworth? 1938? You heard me. Well, they'll be downstairs in the storage room. I'll have to dig them out. Then dig them out. Do it now. Yes, sir. Mr. Pritchett, I know Arthur. He's never done anything wrong, never. If he needed the money, if he was sick or something, I trusted this boy. Mr. Pritchett? Uh, oh? I'm Detective Brody. I've been listening. I'm asking you to reconsider. But why did he do this terrible thing? Why, kid? It's so hard to explain. Even to myself. She was the one human being in the world I loved. Jake. Jake, the dog. She changed. Sure, I know, I know. I should have accepted that. But I couldn't. I made a final grandstand play for her. I took your money, Mr. Pritchett, and I blew the works on her. I thought that maybe I could... Anyway, I... I lost. You admit you did wrong? Oh, yes, yes. You willing to pay him back? Yes, of course, as soon as I can. Well, Mr. Pritchett, this kid had a fine record in the Navy, remember? I know. Uh... He took a lot of chances for us. Maybe we ought to take one for him. Now, why, why don't we talk this over, huh? Uh, come along, Arthur. You too, Miss Carmichael. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming down, Mrs. McLeod. Sit down, won't you? What's this about, Lieutenant? When you phoned the house, I... Now, 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 you're all upset. Oh, where's my husband? Jim hasn't been shot. No, 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 of course not. You'll see him in a few minutes. He's down in the basement. I, uh... I didn't want him around when you came in. What is it? What's wrong? He assaulted a prisoner, Mrs. McLeod. 
Jim wouldn't do that. Oh, you can take my word that he did. Did you ever run into a man named Kurt Schneider? No. Did you ever hear your husband mention the name Kurt Schneider? No, Lieutenant. Jim never discusses his work with me. No, yeah, well, that's a good idea. We don't like to bring this sort of stuff into our homes. Uh, where'd you live before you were married? Why, well, I'm from upstate. Oh? Then, during the war, I came down and got a job in a defense plant in New Jersey, Newark. Newark, huh? Now, this doctor was in Newark about that time. Doctor? Yeah, Kurt Schneider. But uh, you never knew him. No. He knows you, Mrs. McLeod. What makes you think that? He said so. I'm afraid he's mistaken. He was positive. Are you sure that Dr. Schneider never treated you? I just told you no. If you'll tell the truth, Mrs. McLeod, you can help your husband. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm not lying. I'm going to have to ask you a personal question. Don't get angry, but I must ask you. Have you ever had a child? You know, Jim, and I have no children. That's not what I asked. You have no right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now, does this name mean anything to you? Tommy Giacopetti. No. Giacopetti's here, Mrs. McLeod. He's waiting down the hall. Wait here, please. That won't be long. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Jim, come here a minute, will you? Yeah, Lou. Uh, Jim, I just had a long talk with Mr. Pritchett. He's willing to drop the charges. What? Is that true, Mr. Pritchett? You told me you're a man of iron. Well, I, I'd i like to give the boy another chance. To steal from someone else? I, I, I'm a gambler, Mr. McLeod. I bet on horses. And at this once, I'll bet on a human being. Stick to horses. The percentage is better. Uh, Jim... I advised Mr. Pritchett to do this. You had no right, Lou. This is my case. You know better. Jim, you're busy. Those two burglars. Be right with you, Gallagher. Well, I didn't think you'd mind. But I do. Well, I'm sorry. Oh, I never really know what you were here for. I right? never knew. Right. Here's the sheet, Jim. Here's Jenny's record. Never been arrested, he says. Well, Charlie. Feel like talking now? What do you guys want from me? I'm in mother's grave. I've done not nothing. And you never were in jail? May I drop dead on the spot? Heartbreaking, isn't it? These are your fingerprints, Charlie. They never lie. Twenty-seven arrests all told and three jail sentences. Nice going, Charlie. I was walking into an apartment looking for a friend. Minding my own business. So it's the wrong apartment. With a jimmy and a gun? Who are you kidding? If he makes one false move, you have a club. Use it. What about this schnook, his partner? Book him. Book him both. <laughs> All right, Jacka Petty, I'd like some information. That woman downstairs, Mrs. McLeod. But, Mary, that girl's 100%. I wouldn't say a word against her. You don't have to. Besides, all this is off the record. I better phone my lawyer. It ain't necessary. My lawyer gets mad. I'm a legitimate businessman. You take it up with my attorney. Look, I've gone through the files, Jacka Petty. We got a sheet on you, but we don't operate in New Jersey. What went on there ain't none of our business unless you make it so. Capish? Yeah. Yeah, I capish. Yeah. Now, when did you know this girl? Nine, ten years ago. You like her? I was crazy about her. I'd have married her if I could have got a divorce. What broke it up? Who knows? Dames. Who can understand dames? What do you think? I think maybe I'll call my lawyer. Does she have a baby? Yeah. She comes to see me. This is after she runs out of me. I wanted that baby. I told her, give me your son. I'll give you anything you want. The moon out of the sky. Only that's the last I see of her. Next thing I hear, she's gone to some doctor. A bum. Didn't even have a hospital. Baby was born dead. Is that all? Almost. Well, maybe now you'll tell me what it's all about, huh? And where's Mary? Come on, let's go down and see her. So for the last time, Miss Carmichael, save your breath. Arthur's under arrest. Are you so perfect, Mr. McLeod? Didn't you ever make a mistake? I was new on this job, Miss Carmichael. We brought in two boys. They looked like babies. They cried. I let them go. Two nights later, two nights, one of them held up a butcher, shot him through the head and killed him. Yes, I made a mistake. I'm not going to do it again. 
Well, Mr. Pritchett? Well, really, I I, I don't know what. I, I, it, it is the first offense. It's and never a first offense. It's just the first time they get caught. Why are you so vicious? I'm not vicious, young lady. I didn't steal this man's money. He did. Look, this is a war, Mr. Pritchett. We know it, they know it, but you don't. We're your army. We're here to protect you. I'm sick and tired of massaging the complainant into doing his simple duty. Well, I... I guess I got to leave it up to you, officer. Hey, Jim, you wanted in the lieutenant's office. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Mr. Pritchett. Be in court tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Come in, McLeod. Look, about that cot with... Mary, what are you doing here? What is this, honey? I sent for him. Why? This is Tommy Jacopetti. Hi, champ. Say, what's this about? Good, Schneider. May I? May I, please? Yeah, go ahead. Jim, the lieutenant won't believe that you knew nothing about this. I... I... What about what, Mary? Dr. Schneider. What's he got to do with you? And he's no doctor. He isn't? I thought he was. I... I had occasion to go to him once when I needed help. But... You what? A long time ago, Jim. Wait a minute. What's this man here got to do with all this? We... We were going together. I see. And when my... My baby was born... Okay. Diagrams aren't necessary. I get the picture. I beat Schneider up good. Personally. You see, McLeod... Take your hand off my arm. No, you see... Take it off. (laughs) All right, cut that out. I don't have to take that from you, champ. Touch me again and I'll tear you around. I said cut it out. I'll flatten you myself. You mind if I talk to my wife alone? Please. All right, Tommy, let's go. You can leave now, anyway. I'm terribly sorry, Jim. Please forgive me. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, I wanted to, but I was so afraid of losing you. Jack, a pity. How long did you go with him? About, About a year. Did he give you money? No. Give you presents? Yes, he gave me some presents. Expensive ones? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know. What difference does it make? This difference. I just as soon Schneider died. I'd rather go to jail for 20 years than find out my wife was a tramp. Don't say that, Jim. It isn't true. You know it isn't true. I thought I knew you. I thought you were everything good and pure. I tried to make my life everything you wanted it to be. And if I could make my past life over, I'd do that too, gladly. But I can't. No one can. I made a mistake. I admit it. I've paid for it plenty. Isn't that enough? I just heard from the hospital. Schneider's all right. They can't find anything wrong with it. Uh, you can go whenever you want. Oh, Jim, I thank you. Don't judge me. Try and understand. I, I was on my own for the first time in a large city. The war was on. I... I'd only been out with kids my own age until I met this man. He paid me a lot of attention. I was flattered. I, I thought he was romantic and glamorous. Is that why we... You can't have any children? Oh, Jim. I can't take much more of this. Please try and understand. Understand? <gasps> What's there to understand? You went with a pig like that. You had a child by him. Tell me, what's there left to understand? To most of the detectives at the 21st Precinct, this is just another routine night. A young man named Arthur Kindred is being fingerprinted. A shoplift is trying to reach her attorney. A pickpocket's protesting his fate, and a couple of burglars with impressive records glumly watch as their victims arrive to identify their property. But to Detective McLeod, it's a night of agony. The end of his world. Mary has gone, and McLeod's at his desk typing his report on Arthur Kimson. Jim? Jim, you want a drink? No. Jim, I've been your partner 13 years. Did I ever ask you for a favor? What is it, Lou? That kid, I want you to give him a break. 
What makes him so special? A lot. I think he's a good kid. He reminds me of my boy. Mike? Mike was a hero. Why? Because he was killed? If Mike was alive today, he'd have the same problems this kid has. We don't understand him, Jim. I didn't even understand my own kid until he was killed. It was too late then. So how about it? I can't do it. I can't drop the charges. What do you mean you can't drop him? Pritchard left it up to you. I heard him. No. My partner. Arrest his own mother. You shouldn't drink so much, Lou. It melts the lining of your brain. Maybe that's what you need. Maybe it'll melt that rock you got for a heart. Stop it, will you? My nerves are like banjo strings. Well, play something on him. Play Love's Old Sweet Song. I'm warning you, Lou. Lay off. Shut up and lay off. What's the matter with you? I'm drowning, that's all. I'm drowning in my own juices. You sure wish I could understand what makes you tick. Look, Lou, I don't expect you to understand me. I'm a cop because I believe in principle. Principle, Lou. All my life I've lived according to principle and I couldn't change even if I wanted to. Well, Jim, be a little human. Don't be such a lousy monument. How? How do you compromise? How do you... As for that kid in there, who's he? Now, right now, Lou, I'm faced with a problem of my own that's ripping me up like a twenty-two bullet bouncing around inside. And I can't even compromise on that. So what do I do? What do I do? Try picking up that phone and calling her. Oh, go away, Yussel. Go ahead, call her. Call Mary. You don't know anything about it. Don't I? Jim, pick up the phone. Get on your knees. Crawl. She doesn't have the phone. She's coming up the stairs right now. Mary. I'm glad you're back. I'm leaving now, Jim. Here. Here are the keys. No, no, wait. Wait a minute. My taxi's down there. Oh, send it away. No, my things are in it. What things? My bags and my trunk. Oh, Mary, be sensible. Jim, please. I don't want any more arguments. I can't stand them. Look, come inside. I, I can't talk to you here. The meter's ticking. Let it tick. Look, Mary, this isn't a time or place to discuss our lives, past, present, or future. I want you to take your things and go home. I'll be back at 8 a.m. and we'll work this out then. You think we can? We'll have to. I don't think it's possible. Wait a minute. I don't get this. Why are you so bitter? Who's to blame for tonight? You put me in a cement mixer. Now you're acting as if I were the... The tramp. Don't say that. I... I wasn't myself. You were never more yourself, Jim. I'm sorry, Mary. It's all right. I'm beyond feeling. I'm nice and numb. But I know what I'm doing has got to be done. You're married to me. You can't just walk out. Please, Mary, I'm trying. I'm trying. To what? To put all this behind me. And you can't do it. I know the way your mind works, Jim. It never lets go. The rest of our days we'll be living with this. If you won't be saying it, you'll be thinking it. And I couldn't take it. I'd just dry up and die. Why didn't you ever tell me? If you'd come to me once, just once, what good would it have done? Would you have been able to forgive me? Jim, I, I can't go over this again and again. If I didn't love you, need you so, it'd be simple, you understand? I understand. Simple. Go home now and wait for morning. That won't help us. Please, I, I'm so tired. Let me go now, Jim. To what? What do you go to? You who turn on every light in the house when I'm not there? Let me go, Jim. You who can't fall asleep unless my arms are around you. Where will you go? Jim, I beg you. No, Mary, I'm not going to. You're hurting my arm. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <gasps> the taxi's waiting. Please, Jim. You'd go without a tear. I wouldn't say that. One or two, perhaps. I, I have many left. Mary, I... Mary, you, you just don't stop loving someone. I wouldn't have thought so. I wouldn't have believed it could happen, but there it is. I, I suppose we all die many times before they finally bury us was one of those deaths, sudden, unexpected, like being run over by a truck. It happened. Who do you think you're kidding? No one. At least not all myself. Oh, Mary. I love you. Then help me, Jim. Help me. It's no, it's no use, sweetheart. It's no use. I couldn't go home if you weren't waiting for me with the radio going and the smell of coffee on the stove. I'd, I'd blow out my brains. I would, Mary. If I went home for an empty flat, I'd... Yes? Uh, someone to see you, Jim. That lawyer, Sims. 
I'll go home now. No, no. Counselor, I told you your client was faking. He's still very weak. He'll be okay in the morning. And when he's brought back here, he'd better remain okay. You're not to lay a finger on him. If you do... And advise him again to keep his mouth shut. You're lucky you're not facing a murder charge right now. Well, I could always get you to defend me. And I probably would. That's my job, no matter how I feel personally. As long as you get your fee? I've defended many men at my own expense. Oh, that's very noble of you. Nobility doesn't enter into it. Every man has a right to counsel, no matter how guilty he might seem to you, or to me for that matter. And I defend my client. I don't judge him. That remains with the court. And you've got that taken care of, counsel, between bought witnesses and perjured testimony. People who live in glass houses, McLeod, remember... Well, what do you mean by that? If you're so set on hanging, Schneider, why don't you ask Mrs. McLeod if she can supply a corroborating witness? Why, you... Good night, Mrs. McLeod. Jim? What's the matter, dear? Nothing. This has been a terrible day. Yes. Yes. And yet, in a way, I'm glad it's out in the open. I, I've had such an awful feeling of guilt for so long. All right. All right. I needed help, and there was no one. I, I couldn't even go to my parents. Uh, they didn't know? No. You didn't go home? Where did you go? That's when I came to New York. And how long was that before I met you, Mary? Two years. Who'd you go with then? No one. How many others were there, Mary? What? How many others? None. Jim, what's the matter wait, with you? Wait a minute. I had an autopsy. I witnessed yesterday. The medical examiner removed the top of a man's skull, took out the brain, and held it in his hand. Like this. Why are you telling me this? Because I'd give everything I own to take out my brain, hold it under the faucet, and wash away the dirty pictures you put there tonight. Dirty pictures? Yes. Oh, I see. I see. Yes. Yes, that would be fine. If we could. But when you wash away what I may have put there, you'll find you have a rotten spot in your brain, Jim, and it's growing. I know I've watched it. Mary, that's enough. No, let's have the truth. I could never find it in me to see one tiny flaw in you because I loved you so. And God help me, I still do. But let's have the truth for once. You think you're on the side of the angel. Well, you're not. You haven't even a drop of ordinary human forgiveness in your whole nature. Why, you're everything you always said you hated in your own father. I'm not... I'm not going to let you wander off in the streets this way. I'm going to take you home myself. What for? To kill me the way your father killed your mother? Where are you going? Far away. You won't find me. When will I see you? Never. Goodbye, Jim. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Oh, don't you feel good? Yeah, yes, sir, I feel all right. Am I crazy? Look at him, Brody. Yeah, you're gone all green, Jim. Well, I've got a headache. You better go home. I've got a squeal to finish off, Lieutenant. Brody will finish it. I'd rather do it myself. You go home. That's an order. Yes, sir. Dargis, you catch for Jim tonight. Yes, Lieutenant. What happened, Jim? What's wrong? Mary. Mary left me. Walked out. We're, we're finished. She'll come back. No. This was for keeps. You know, Lou, I... I built my whole life on hating my father. Oh, all the time he was inside me laughing. Maybe he was crying, the poor sucker. Maybe he couldn't help himself either. You see, by the time the man... All right! All right! Hey, everybody! Stick him up! Get down! He's got a gun! Get in! He's loose with a gun! Shut up! All of you! You! Nobody makes the move! Drop it! Drop that club! Barnes, do what he said! Drop it, Barnes! He's a four-time loser! I'll kill you! Rot in jail the rest of my life! I'll take five or six you bums with me first! All right, now take it easy! He can't get out unless he... Get up! One word. One move. Anybody. I was wondering when you'd get around to this, Charlie. How'd he get the gun? It's mine. Grabbed it out of my holster. Gallus. Shut up! 
Give me that gun. In the belly, you get it. One step. I'm warning you. One step. Easy, Jimmy. He's got no place to go, and he can't get by the desk so easy. You're a rat, Janini. Give me that gun. No, you don't. One more step. Jim, no. Stay away. Give me that gun. I'm warning you, McLeod. You rat. All right, grab him. Jim. Jim. Oh, Mary. Mary. What's this? Mary. Janini shot McLeod. Notify communications. Get an ambulance. Never. Never mind the doctor. Get a priest. You feel that bad? Jim, they can't hurt you. You're one of the indestructibles. You're immortal, baby. Almost, Lou. Almost. Give me a hand. Squeeze. Harder. Harder. Oh. Is... Is that girl still here? Buster's girlfriend? Susie? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I hope you're right, Lou. Maybe you'll come in next week with a murder rap. I don't know anymore. Huh? How you feeling, Sean? Oh, Joe. Joe, find Mary. Ask her to forgive me and help her. She needs help. Will you? Sure, sure, sure. Now, take it easy. Jim, about Arthur. Send him home. Who's he talking about? That... That embezzlement rap. We don't have any case, Lieutenant. The complainant... The complainant with... In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Oh, my God. I am heartily sorry for having offended thee. I... I detest all my sins because I dread the loss. The loss of... He's gone. He's dead. The loss of... Heaven, I firmly resolve with the help of thy grace to confess my sins, to do penance unto him in my life. Amen. 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 Arthur. Yes, sir. Go on, get out of here. Take Susie home. But don't you make a monkey out of me. If I see you up here again, I'll break every bone in your body. Now, don't make a monkey out of me. Don't worry, Mr. Brody. I won't. He won't, Mr. Brody. All right, now, go on, get lost. Thank you. Our communications. is Lieutenant Monaghan. Notify the commissioner, the DA, homicide squad. 21st Precinct detective shot, killed. Kirk Douglas and Eleanor Foster. Kirk, it's been a long time since you received a curtain call in this theater. Yes, Irving, it has, and it's certainly good to be home again. Home, he says. Eleanor, do you know where we had to, where we had to go to get Kirk for tonight's play? Rome? Paris? Cairo? Nope. 20,000 leagues under the sea. Oh. Well, did you catch him when he came up for air? <laughs> yes. We just waited around the Walt Disney Studios where he's starring in the Jules Verne classic adventure yarn with James Mason, Paul Lucas, and Peter Lorre. Say, Eleanor, why don't you come over and watch some of the scenes for 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, huh? I'd love to, Kirk. We're certainly happy to have you back home making pictures. Thanks. And we're glad you came all the way over from MGM to appear with Kirk tonight. Oh, you're making pictures at MGM now, huh? Yes. We have executive suite there, you know. Executive suite? I always knew you'd amount to something, Eleanor. <laughs> <laughs> now, Kirk, you've been home long enough to know executive suite is one of MGM's 30th anniversary productions with that terrific cast, William Holden, June Allison, Barbara Stanwyck, Cedric March, Walter Pigeon, Shelley Winters, Paul Douglas, and Lewis Calhoun. Wow, what a cast. <laughs> and with three beautiful feminine stars. And we're proud to say they're Lux girls, just as Eleanor is. I certainly am, Irving. Lux soap has been my favorite complexion care for, well, as long as I can remember. It's wonderful. And I understand, Irving, you have a wonderful play for next week. Next week, we're going to bring you one of the most honored motion pictures of our time. A great comedy drama. Recipient of seven Academy Awards. It's Paramount Pictures' unforgettable, Going My Way. One of Leo McCary's excellent productions. And as our stars, that excellent actor, William Lundigan. And recreating his Academy Award-winning role will be that lovely rascal, Barry Fitzgerald. I just loved it, Irving. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, and hurry back. Where did I 
cast tonight were Jack Crucian as Detective Brody, Edgar Barrier as Dr. Schneider, Larry Dodkin as Jocka Petty, Herb Vigran as Joel, Dan Riss as Sims, Herb Butterfield as Mr. Pritchett, Marvin Bryan as Arthur, Julie Bennett as Susan, Doris Singleton as Miss Hatch, Jeff Mankin as Janini, Herb Ellis as Detective Gallagher, and Eddie Marr as Detective Dockus. Our radio play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was composed and directed by Rudy Schrager. Don't forget Lever Brothers' Pair and Despair plan, the smart new way to buy stockings. You get three nationally advertised first.